Farmers are becoming increasingly more desperate as it appears the White House has abandoned them in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, now, the coronavirus, of course, has been ravaging its way across the country. Uh, around 80,000 people dead now, over a million uh, that are infected. Several bailouts later, and the farmers really haven't gotten a whole lot. In fact, the Washington Post reports that the coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc on the $2 trillion food industry, and it's destroying supply chains, leaving farmers worse off than they've ever been before. Now, the problems for the farming industry had existed prior to the coronavirus, and I've, I've talked about this quite uh, a lot, actually. Um, during this uh, trade war that we were having, that you know we were having with China because of Donald Trump, you had farms that were devastated because they could no longer sell a lot of their produce to China. They, they were a very, very big customer. Uh, so now that led, of course, to millions of soybeans, uh, soybean farmers no longer having anywhere to sell their soybeans, of course, uh, and that because of that, you had farm bankruptcies that increased by nearly 20% in 2019. This is according to recently released data from U.S. courts. Uh, now, the only time it was actually worse, 20%, right? The only time that it was worse is the year following the Great Recession in which Chapter 12 bankruptcies for farmers rose 30 to 33%. So now you had that problem with China, and now you add in COVID-19. And of course, the reduced demand from COVID-19, as people are, are starting to hunker down, restaurants have closed, people aren't really going out to eat anymore. And as a result, you've seen farmers dumping milk, throwing away produce, and euthanizing their own animals. Now, look, I don't know about you guys, right? But this feels like it's a missed opportunity to, you know, give poor people free food, especially as food banks have been slammed with people out of work. In fact, according to the group Feeding America, food banks across the U.S. have reported an increased 40% in demand. Wow, 40%. I'm telling you, man, I, I, there's a New York Times article last month, early last month, that pointed all these things out. And and reading that, I'm like, this 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 is going to make me even more socialist than I am, to, like to see this happen, because it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to happen. There there's no reason why these farmers can't team up with the food banks to give. The food banks, more food. Uh, look, in fact, th there is two organizations that have actually proposed doing something like this. This is according to CNN. Uh, to two organizations, the American Farm Bureau, which represents American agricultural producers, and Feeding America, have uh, proposed a voucher program that would have increased the relationship between farmers, farmers and food banks, which would allow them to work more directly with each other. Now, the USDA, and it, it, it would involve the USDA, but it would actually cut the bureaucracy and the red tape, make it so that they can work better together and use a voucher program from the USDA uh, to basically send farm products to food banks. And it would help the farmers and ranchers recoup costs, uh, I'm sorry, recoup losses from their lost markets, such as restaurants and tourism businesses shuttered by the pandemic. And also, as I said, help the food banks. I mean, this is this is a win-win. Now, what has the administration been doing about this? Well, apparently, under uh, unfortunately, under the USDA Trump appointee Sonny Perdue, nothing. They have not done anything about this. They have not uh, purchased any food from these farmers to distribute to other people. In fact, they've just been letting this happen as farmers lose money, and as people continue to go hungry. I mean, look, instead of doing this, he focuses, Sonny Perdue does, on defending the meat plants that haven't adequately protected their workers during COVID-19. That has led to, of course, an enormous spike in workers at these uh, meat processing plants getting COVID-19 and having to isolate. So now these farmers... They are desperate. They are hurting without this help. 
Uh, in fact, 43-year-old dairy farmer Scott Glazen uh, of New York said this, quote, this is the worst I've ever seen it. And I've seen some very bad times. No kidding. Uh, Glazen, a seventh generation dairy farmer, has hoped to turn a profit for the first time in four years. But the pandemic has cut milk costs, wiping out much of the demand for dairy and disrupted transportation and processing. The Missouri based marketing firm that distributes Glazen and other farmers to start, I'm, a, uh, I'm sorry, um, the marketing firm that distributes Glazen and other farmers told them to start dumping their milk in March. And so now he dumps half or all of his cow's milk on many different days. He said, quote, it's something you can barely stand to watch. When we see that product going down the drain, it's painful to us. Look, now maybe this is me, right? But saying that product, right? The product. Well, it's not just a product. It's for some families, it's the difference between life and death. Between a full belly and, and something empty, right? And maybe I'm being totally unfair he says, it hurts me when I see my product go down the drain because I could have made money on that, right? And so maybe I'm harping on that choice of words too much, but it really kind of bothers me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. Now, another farmer here, uh, 55-year-old Scott Bluebaugh, who's a cattle rancher and a crop farmer in Oklahoma, he says, look, what we want is we, we don't want just government handouts. We don't want Donald Trump's, you know, $16 billion handout to the, to the farmers for throwing away half our stuff. No, we want, we want something else. But he also adds, this may be the only way to keep some of these uh, people going for another year. No, no. You have the government buy the stuff and distribute it to people in need. That's how you get it going. That way you're not dumping your stuff, right? You're still doing your job. You're still, you're still putting out the product and you're still getting paid for your work it's just the government is now the buyer and is distributing to food banks and people in need. Why is this hard? This shouldn't be difficult, but it is for them. Apparently, uh, that's socialism, communism. Can't have that here in America. America never be a socialist country. Never. Shut. Mm. Just stop. Stop it now. And do something that actually helps, even if it's dreaded socialism. We can help the farmers and the American people by doing something that makes sense. But they're not doing that. Now, getting back to what Blue Boss says, he says, if Congress does nothing more than what they've done to this point, we will have a very bad crisis in agriculture that will uh, be equal to the 1980s, and I think it could be worse. It could be uh, 1930s level, Wh which we're looking at when it comes to job losses in America. We've got over 30 million people out of work, at near 15% near, near unemployment rate, and it could be damn near 20% if you actually count all the people that haven't been able to get through and the people that are not able to get benefits, even with them being expanded. So come on. All right. Anyway, he says this, quote, we're going to see a mass exodus of farmers and ranchers if they don't do something. We don't want that government check. I, I think I already said that. Um, but anyway, uh, it's gotten so bad, right, that farm suicides, farmer suicides have increased. In fact, Blue Ball had recently recalled a conversation with one farmer while volunteering for a farmer's union suicide hotline. He said, quote, he had the gun loaded and his wife called farm aid. He was crying and just saying, I want out of this. I just want out of this. So you got farmers that are looking to, you know, commit suicide. This is all while Trump and the administration do practically nothing to help these people. Opening up the state economies is not going to increase demand, especially when you have people that are not ready to come out yet. That are, These are people that the majority of Americans that are listening to the science are listening to the scientists and saying, no, no, we're, we're not going to go to the restaurant. We're not going to go to the movie theater or anything unless we know that we're not going to get a virus and spread it to our families and our loved ones. 
We're not going to do that. No, I'm still going to stay home as much as possible until the, the doctors say that it's clear. And right now, when you open it up, you actually make it longer. You make this last longer when you open up the states too early because then it spreads again and people will continue to be forced to go back inside. And so it, it's absolutely ridiculous what we're doing. Uh, and so, and, and look, you know, you know, even if people were ready, there's a lot of people that don't have enough money to go and, and you know, uh, frequent these restaurants. I mean, look, you have millions of people that are unable to get unemployment benefits because of old unreliable systems. As I mentioned, that 30 million people that are unemployed now, and then you still have some that haven't received their one-time $1,200 coronavirus check. And most, even if they have, it already went to rent. It's gone. There's nothing left. How are you supposed to buy food without money? How are you supposed to stimulate demand if you're broke? The solution is not to reopen right now. No, the solution is to give people their own money in the form of a $2,000 a month UBI. That is the taxpayer's money. Guess what? It should go back to the taxpayer in the form of a UBI stimulus until this crisis is over, until we have returned to pre-coronavirus levels. You know why? Because they'll spend that money, right? Now, as for the farmers, again, they should do the food bank thing at the very least. The USDA needs to get up off their ass and say, yes, we think that's a great idea. We will give the farmers uh, a voucher uh, and we will allow them to give that food to food banks that are in desperate need and we're going to compensate them for it. That is what the government is literally supposed to do in a crisis. It's not a government handout. It's the government actually being effective at doing what they're supposed to do. They're protecting the farmers and they're ensuring that people get fed until this crisis is over. It's a literal win-win. But we can't do it. But we can't do it. Now, one more thing. If we're going to learn anything from this pandemic, I would hope is that we can't go back to the old ways. We can't go back to doing things the way that we used to do it. I mean, and that's what literally what the administration is wanting to do, to get back to the old, right? Farm bailouts. And then depending on the quote unquote markets to correct themselves. Well, the markets correcting themselves literally involves tons, millions of tons of food waste, while millions of people simultaneously go hungry. Does that, does that system make sense to you at all? Does that make sense yet? I mean, what are we doing? I mean, the system was not created to weather a crisis. And in reality, the system is exposed for what it is because of the crisis. There was always more than enough food for the hungry. It's just the capitalism meant that it was better to waste that food, more economical to waste that food, than to give it to hungry people. And that is a disgusting system that we need to replace with something much, much better. Now is the time to do it because this old system has already fallen apart. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.